can see my Corolla from my window. <laughs> First time it's been outside in forever. But, uh, both my carbs suck. And it idles, but it, uh, it idles. But I have my, my carb sinking tool here. And it, that back carb isn't doing anything while well, this front carb is doing really well. I don't know what that is. I don't think my thermostat's doing anything because there's no flow in the radiator when I look in it. Uh, I have a bunch of gas, or well, just some sort of vapor coming from my crankcase. Like my, uh, my old catch can is just smoking a bunch and... I'm hoping it's just because it's just a bunch of old shit. It's, just, it's a brand new motor. It's got zero miles on it. So, that's what I'm hoping. Um, my T3 cam gears, uh, one of the adjustable pieces stripped because no matter what tightness I put it, it would only shimmy a little bit. So, I'm really upset about that because their company's great. So, I'm hoping it was just a fluke and uh, it, it's whatever. It's bullshit. I'll have to order another one, but whatever. I'll, I'll talk to those guys about that. Um... But whatever. I like OEM stuff anyways. So that's where we are now. Um, it's running really hot, and that's why I'm letting it cool down a little bit. Uh, I'm right at about 140 now. So it got up to 200, letting it idle. So 140 is not too bad. I want to let it drop a little bit because I'm going to take my thermostat all the way out just to make sure my water pump is actually doing something. If I don't, I've got about three other ones inside. So... Uh, we're getting there. It's out. It's outside, and that is better. As you see, I still got to paint this side. I started sanding that back section, so I got to paint it. I got to line it up just a little bit. That blue looks great outside. I fucking love it. I can't wait to get that other side painted. <sighs> we're close. Also, my auto meter, which is another good company, that's pissing me off right now. Auto meter RPM gauge. Uh, I have to press in as hard as I can on the wires going into the gauge to get it to read anything, to get it to even turn back on. So I'm pretty pissed about that. And I um, have to get another RPM gauge, which is a bunch of bullshit. So everything's falling apart. But I did. I also did a compression test. All the cylinders are fine, so that's good. And uh, I don't know. I just said in the last video, I just want to drift. That's all I want to do. I just want to fucking drift. Hey, Mama. What? What? Cat's freaking out. I guess the only good thing that happened was my buddy Wes at Injuka Racing sent me a bunch of stickers and some shirts and stuff, so makes me feel a little bit better. Anyways, uh, yeah, let's, let's get on see if we can actually drive this thing down the street today. I know I'll share with you guys. I almost just choked on my soda. Okay, it runs. It idles. Sounds good. Idles at an okay spot. I don't believe that oil pressure, but whatever. I'm not having any luck with grounds anywhere. But when I blip it, I'll show you. If I give it a quick throttle, it wants to die. So I don't know if it just needs to warm up first. And it takes a while to come back down. See? It wants to die. But it wants to stay idling, which is a start. So, I don't know. We'll let it warm up, see what it does, see where it wants to idle, and see if I can hammer it, because you should always be able to at least put your foot on the floor. So I don't know why it hesitates wants to die when I give it gas. Maybe the float levels are set wrong. I need to adjust the float level, who knows. But, uh, yeah, we'll go from there. Okay. Raining now, but I'm going to explain to you why I'm having so much hesitation. This is my accelerator pump. And it was pretty much stuck all the way down. feeling a little bit better now. I've been scraping it this whole time. Yeah. 
yeah, see. So, once I can get that cleaned out, no more hesitation. And it actually should run smooth so I can actually drive it. Okay. Now the next day, on my way to work, um, started raining real bad yesterday, and the car's outside of the garage right now, just because I don't want to run it inside the garage. My roommate lives above it, and it's going to smoke him out. So, <laughs> uh, I found the issue. Looks like it is the accelerator pump itself on the front carburetor. It's just stuck. You can see how crappy it is. I tried sanding down right here to get it a little smoother, but, um, yeah, it doesn't move, so those pumps aren't doing anything. An old, uh, an old hot rod trick and drilled out the accelerator pump jets. Uh, made them a little bigger so it gets a quicker shot of gas. It doesn't throw in more gas when you floor it. It's just sends it all into the cylinders um, within a shorter time period. So a little bit quicker of a shot. Um, helped a little bit, but that front carb isn't doing anything when I floor it, so it still wants to die, it still hesitates when you give it a quick blip of the gas. So, hopefully I'm going to bring that to work today uh, while I'm working, I'm going to clean it out, hopefully we have a wire brush or something at my work to bring home, like a, like a pipe cleaner, and um, clean out the inside of that carb. And hopefully it's not raining, or at least too bad. Hopefully that gets fixed, so I can at least um, take it for a drive today. Cause it starts up at idles, the timing's fine. Um, I just want to get that fixed because it was running a little lean or rich, whatever. It's too early for me to decipher between the two because I'm stupid. All right, so this is a pump jet that was stuck, and now it seems to be free every time. So. I'm going to put this whole top part back together, fire it up, and hopefully there's no hesitation. And if not... Or fire. Or fire. Yeah. You guys missed that. Uh, and if there's no hesitation or anything, then I'm going to take it for a little drive.
Okay, so took for a couple trips down the street, adjusted the timing once. Uh, under regular load, it just starts breaking up, and it's it doesn't doesn't want to move at all. So uh, also because of my radiator issue, I'm running really hot, and my dinky fan. So I sprayed some water on the radiator and just letting the fan run cool down. We only got to 180, but it, it would just only keep climbing. So I can only do this short short trips. But it moved. We drove it a little bit, so we're getting there. Uh, like I said, just little bits of uh, timing adjustment. And uh, yeah, we'll get there. to drain the oil because there's still a bunch of crap in there from when the head went, the gasket went, and um, oil pressure is like 100 psi at all times, so there's still gunky and crap in there, so I'm going to drain that, put some good oil in another filter, which is annoying, uh, let's see, going to do some different tests with spark plugs, because I've got way too cold of a plug in there right now, and that's not helping. Hopefully that and me flushing out the crappy gas and putting some new gas went and filled up this with some 93 because that's pretty much all we can get here in mass, which blows, but it is what it is. So, different plugs. Uh, get the timing back to where I know it should be because yesterday I was... Uh, playing with a, a little bit before, a little bit after, and it was, I'm pretty sure it's just my plugs and bad gas that's making it hesitate and misfire and do all this crap where I can't really drive it. Alright, got the oil draining now. Gonna see if I can't get some lighting down here. Nope, can't see it, but it's a lot more like a liquid than it was uh, when the gasket blew, so we're in good shape so far, <laughs> but it's still, it's already like crappy, so let that drain out, and um, multitasking here, because for one night ever I'd like to just do nothing, so get all this shit done, and in the morning we'll just really crank on this thing and actually check one of those things I haven't lost too much coolant steam coming out normally indicates there's some shit getting in there so after I do all this I'm also going to run another compression test like I did the other day even though that came out good who knows I know with these ARP studs you're supposed to torque them, retorque them up to two more times after the initial torquing, which is super lame, but I haven't really driven the car, so I wouldn't expect to have to retorque them already. Normally you put a, f normally you put a few miles on them and then you torque them down again, and, or at least check the torque. But okay. Plugs. What I've got are Factory BCPR 5EYs, or 1266, like uh, we stock them at advance. I'm uh, going to gap them a little bit lower at 0 .040, normally the 0.044, just with higher compression, naturally aspirated carbs. I'm just going to bring it a little bit smaller of a gap. And if those don't work out good, then I have the BCPR 6 ESs, so the 2330s, gap to the same amount. Um, I might just keep these. Uh, for when I put 
the bigger cams. Don't do that. Uh, oil is changed. Uh, factory spark plugs back in. Wires on. Coolant is still somewhat in the car, even though the radiator leaks. So all we got left to do: start it up, let it run for a little while. I'm gonna change uh, one of my little eyelets, uh, copper connectors. Go into my alternator because the one that's on there right now is all shitty and crunchy, so it's only gonna last so long. So I gotta do that. I won't show you guys that boring process. But um, yeah, let's start it up. See what the oil pressure looks like. Also, want to let it get to temp so I can time it properly. nine in the morning get a head start on this thing all right flush out all the old gas get the new gas in it I need to find where I'm gonna what container I'm gonna put the old gas into because I don't really have an empty one uh, do that um, finish up the alignment and figure out why my oil pressure gauge is being a bitch so figure all that out. Hopefully the rain holds out. I can take this for a couple trips up and down the street, get it dialed in, so I can really start driving it. And uh, break it in, because the moment that motor is broken and flushing the oil, putting the good shit in, and I'm fucking drifting. I don't care if it breaks that day. That's what's happening. So, um, yeah, let's get to work. Yeah, that's what the fuel coming out looks like. When it was in the carbs, it was actually pink. alternator up. There's not enough tension on it, so it squeals. But this is what I'm talking about. It just goes way past there. It doesn't fluctuate at all. And there's no way it's at 100 psi. Over 100 psi, it's not.
really good for 12 to 1 compression. <laughs> it's pretty high. And also something fell down. Now I need to find what it is. Okay. So I've taken the valve covers, cams off, everything. And unlike yesterday, I didn't loosen them and then torque them again. I just checked all the torque. And a couple of them moved a little bit um, towards the back. Actually, a couple moved a little bit up front too, but um, I didn't loosen them. I just, just retorqued them. So now I'm going to check the compression on cylinder 4, pretty much only cylinder 4, and if it's still below 125 like it just was, could be a ring issue. Uh, if it's a little bit better, then it's kind of my suspicion of them not torquing down properly, so I need to get a new head gasket and um, really clean out all the threads. So let's see what it reads. So, compression was still about 125 is bullshit. Actually, it was a little, a little bit lower than 125. It's like 115. Pour a little bit of oil down the cylinder just to double check that if, just in case it was the rings. Because if it goes up a lot, then it's normally rings. If it just moves a little bit, if or nothing, usually a head gasket. Um, put a little bit of oil down there, and now nothing will read on my compression rest tester at all. It's just not working. Um, so I'm just going to go with my first suspicion and taking the head off, new head gasket, clean the threads, get them fuckers torqued down, and um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that in the next scene. You will see brand new compression or shitty compression, and then from there we'll see so in the next scene I'm either going to give you good news or bad news and okay quick break we've got <coughs> head off um, studs out, going to clean them I will show you what I mean by the threads being dirty and not sealing properly this is the part that the nut was on and that, you can see the color change. All that rust and crap that was down in the block. It's not good. So we're going to clean those out. We're going to put a nice strong head gasket. I actually got a Cometic 1 mil head gasket that's suited specifically for my cylinder bore as well. It's 82 millimeters. But, quick tip. Anytime you're using TRD metal head gasket, HKS metal, Cometic like I am in this case, you're always going to want to copper spray it. A couple nice thin coats. Um, I use Permatex. I use Permatex everything when it comes to sealing. I'm dropping it. But uh, it's going to look something like this. Let's see if I can get it in the light. <laughs> yep. It'll, it'll fill in any of the imperfections. Okay, moment of truth. Like I said, uh, when we come back to this scene, it's either going to be good news, bad news. Um, in our case, ARP studs torque to what they recommend. All the bolt holes cleaned out everything. Back two cylinders were all over the place in compression. And the front two were at 200 PSI. That's with 12 to 1 compression pistons. Whew. So I overnighted a Cometic 1mm head gasket. Copper sprayed it, threw it on. Re reinstalled ARP studs, same thing. Actually, the front ones are a little low too. Took them out. I copper sprayed the Cometic head gasket again. Rebolted everything down with OEM Toyota head bolts at their recommended torque specs. And my compression's at 250 from cylinder one to cylinder four. So I have a working engine again, and my compression's going to be just fine. After the motor breaks in, I'll retorque everything down. It'll be good. Um, right now, I'm at least happy that the engine's not shit. Uh, ARP is shit, and I'm going <laughs> to say it right now. They can say whatever they want. Um, I guess the way I'll close this video out is to grab all of these studs that... And I'm not kidding here. This is a true statement. Um, have made me switch from this block to the block that's in it 
from a large port head to a reman small port head, about five head gaskets. Um, garbage. Absolute garbage. Supposed to be amazing. Made me thinking I'm having all these engine issues. Nope. OEM Toyota head bolts. That's all you need for these things. It, it has perfect fucking compression. ARP, never again. I'll, I'm going to take the stickers. I'm going to take all the stickers off the car that say ARP on them. Really. Um, if you're going ARP, go with ARP bolts. It is what it is. I know I'll never use them again. Um, normally, I'll either have a TRD or a, an HKS head gasket. The quickest one I could get is a Cometic head gasket, so we'll see how that works. Um, seems pretty good. So, uh, for now, for now, I will support them. As long as it doesn't blow, but I've heard I've heard good things from Cometic, but ARP I, I haven't been this upset about something in a while. It's pretty much the only thing I've bought for this car that's actually let me down that bad. Pretty much two different engines, a whole bunch of different swaps, a whole bunch of different variations. I've been chasing a whole bunch of different things and all it took was some OEM head bolts to fix it. So, actually two sets of ARP head studs. I have I have broken a head stud. So we're gonna close this video out now after my after my little ARP rant. But I'm pretty happy. I, I I'm upset but I'm happy at the same time. Um maybe in the next video we'll throw the carbs on and see if we can't get it running properly without any hesitation. We'll be able to drive this thing because it's not trying to burn up coolant anymore with the crappy compression and all the coolant blowing by. So who knows? Maybe maybe the next video we will. Uh, we'll see you in the next video. Hopefully this one wasn't wasn't too boring for you. I know it was kind of a roller coaster. You know it's broken. It's not broken. It could be broken. We got new things. Certain manufacturers suck. Um, we got the carbs back off because we're we're doing a whole a whole other thing with this engine that I was planning on, but it'll be good in the end. So. We will close it out now. We'll see you in the next video.